click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends i welcome you all to the subject electromagnetic field theory we are with chapter number 11 the plane wave reflection and dispersion in this chapter we are seeing the electromagnetic wave is getting reflected when it incidents onto a boundary which separates medium 1 from medium 2 we are considering the perfect dielectric medium to reflect the wave hence we have to find the reflected portions for electric wave and magnetic wave along with the transmitted one that we represent er hr ht and et so based on to this one we have solved with two problems so again take one more problem to finish up this concept where we require the representations of these reflected and transmitted ones as a function of time so we have here the problem statement according to the problem statement a uniform plane wave in free space is normally incident on a dielectric having relative permittivity of 4 and relative permeability of unity if ei bar is equal to e0 times e to the power jz ax cap for z less than equal to 0 where e0 is the real constant fine we have to determine the three parts to find so frequency and wavelength of the incident and transmitted wave second one the magnetic field of the incident wave and the third one expressions of fields in transmitted wave so in this problem statement we come to know that the uniform plane wave is having the first medium is free space so medium number 1 is free space hence we can mention epsilon equal to epsilon 0 mu equal to mu 0 the corresponding permittivity and permeabilities so from this medium number 1 the incidence is of normal incident on to the dielectric medium so dielectric medium is medium number 2 and it has the relative permittivity of 4 so epsilon r2 is equal to 4 and relative permeability of unity so mu r2 is equal to 1 so as per this problem statement we can draw the diagram which separate out the two mediums so let us say this is the interface which separates medium number 1 and medium number 2 so this is medium number 1 and this one is medium number 2 medium number 1 as per the problem statement is free space whereas the second one is dielectric hence for the free space if we write the conductivity sigma 1 equal to 0 the permittivity epsilon equal to epsilon 0 the permeability mu 1 is equal to also mu 0 now in the medium 2 as it is a dielectric medium we consider the conductivity sigma 2 is equal to 0 the relative permittivity is 4 hence epsilon 2 will be equal to 4 times epsilon 0 and the relative permeability is equal to 2 hence mu 2 mu 2 will be equal to mu 0 into 1 now we have these values of materials after that in the medium number 1 that is z less than 0 we have incident electric wave given by e0 e to the power jz ax cap hence i mention here for the incident electric and magnetic wave we can mention ei and hi bars so ei bar we have so that is capital e0 the amplitude of this particular electric wave at its maximum value e to the power minus jz so z represents the direction of propagation along the positive z direction being having the minus jz to this e power into ax cap so this should be in folds per meter so this is the region z less than 0 this region is z greater than 0 for medium 2 and this is the boundary surface z equal to 0 that means this is xy plane this is xy plane that can be shown like this also so this is xy plane that is infinite along the x and y direction y dimensions you can say so this much is the given detail e0 is a real constant now let us focus on to the part a in part a we require the frequency and wavelength of the incident and transmitted wave 
so frequency we denote by f wavelength we denote by lambda so for incident and transmitted so here we make into the diagram the reflected wave shown by this particular arrow into the reverse direction representing er and hr whereas the transmitted will will be into the medium number 2 so it will be represented by et bar and ht bar so for part a we begin to solve the boundary we have therefore at the boundary we have the reflection coefficient and transmission coefficient so in the part a we require first of all the frequency and wavelength so this is our problem statement frequency and wavelength of the incident and transmitted wave so let us say for the first one incident wave as per the given data we have ei bar so it is given as e0 that is real constant e to the power minus j z into a x cap now in general the e i bar should be equal to e0 e to the power minus beta z beta z into j into a x cap so z being the positive z direction for the propagation of the incident wave hence it incidence onto the boundary surface z equal to 0 now beta should be equal to 1 then and only this equation shall be satisfied therefore for medium 1 in which the incident wave is there we write beta is equal to 1 now we know that lambda is the wavelength and into the uh, wavelength lambda the distance covered for the one wave cycle the phase changes by 2 pi radians beta is the phase shift constant hence we have the formula lambda is equal to 2 pi divided by beta so if we substitute beta is equal to 1 we simply obtain lambda is equal to simply lambda is equal to 2 pi meters 2 pi meters so i shall write it here lambda equal to 2 pi meters here now we require frequency and wavelength so for obtaining the frequency we have the relation between the velocity frequency and wavelength it is given by velocity of propagation divided by the wavelength lambda now what is the velocity of propagation into medium 1 as per the given problem statement the medium 1 is a free space see the uniform plane wave in the free space hence for the free space v is given by 1 upon under root mu 0 epsilon 0 upon lambda we can say so this value we know that it is 3 into 10 raised to power 8 meter per second for the free space for velocity and lambda just now we have written it is equal to 2 pi so this gives us the frequency value so frequency value we can say 47.75 into 10 raised to power 6 and simply we can mention the frequency frequency f is 47.75 megahertz now frequency we have and we have the wavelength also that is for the incident wave that is for the incident wave now in the second part we require the magnetic field of the incident wave magnetic field of the incident wave so to obtain that we take the help from intrinsic impedance for magnetic wave we have the relation that is e upon h is nothing but the intrinsic impedance the medium one to be the free space we write the intrinsic impedance is equal to eta zero so this is ei this is hi we know that ei is having the direction that is a x cap a x cap so interface is at z equal to 0 e is having orientation of x h should have orientation of y so that we can say that the transverse electromagnetic mode of wave propagation will be ideally followed by this particular electromagnetic wave hence we can write e x upon h y is equal to eta 0 therefore the magnetic field intensity we require to know so hy component in terms of ex and eta 0 will be given by ex upon eta 0 so ex 
ex is having the amplitude e0 it is multiplied by e to the power minus jz eta 0 eta 0 is 120 pi it is actually under root of mu 0 divided by epsilon 0 so this gives us 120 pi or approximated to the value 377 ohms so we have substituted 120 pi therefore h h we can write so h is for the incident wave so we write h i bar it is nothing but e 0 divided by 120 pi e to the power minus j z as it was the y component we mentioned a y cap is the direction for magnetic field intensity the unit we can mention ampere per meter so this way we are covered with the two parts the frequency and wavelength and the magnetic field for the incident wave lastly we require the expressions for fields into the transmitted wave so for part c we take the help from transmission coefficient so transmission coefficient for the electric wave we denote by gamma sub x capital t and it is the ratio of et divided by ei hence as per the previous video it is given by twice eta 2 divided by eta 1 plus eta 2 so what is the intrinsic impedance into the medium number 2 the intrinsic impedance in the medium to eta 2 we can mention it is under root mu 2 divided by epsilon 2 mu 2 divided by epsilon 2 hence if we get back to the diagram here in the diagram we have mentioned all the things or here we can say the mu 2 can be obtained by mu r 2 into mu 0 so mu r 2 is 1 and epsilon r 2 is equal to 4 hence it will be under root mu 0 divided by 4 times epsilon 0 so this gives us the value 1 upon 2 under root mu 0 divided by epsilon 0 which is nothing but 120 pi or simply we can mention eta 0 therefore this is eta suffix 0 in divided by 2 as intrinsic impedance it is we write into omega so eta 2 we know now from the transmission coefficient we can make et is equal to ei in the multiplication with that is transmission coefficient was it was eta 2 divided by eta 1 plus eta 2 so this was twice here so substituting the values ei will be already there in the multiplication with it will be twice into eta 0 divided by 2 divided by it will be eta 0 for the free space and this will be eta 0 divided by 2 so finally we obtain 0 0.666 eta suffix i sorry capital e suffix i so this is et this is et now the transmitted electric wave as it was initially having the a x component therefore a x cap will be the direction the direction of the incident electric wave and that of the transmitted electric wave from the boundary condition will be the same we know that e tan 1 is equal to e tan 2 e tan 1 equal to e tan 2 at the boundary which separates the medium therefore we mention et bar is equal to 0 0.666 into e0 e to the power minus j into z into a x cap so this is the required transmitted part for the electric wave into the medium number 2 now we require the transmitted magnetic part into medium 2 so for that purpose we again take the intrinsic impedance of medium 2 it uh, eta 2 it is actually et divided by ht so et is having the x component and y component will be for the magnetic field intensity therefore we can mention hty is equal to et suffix x divided by eta 2 so eta 2 we can substitute so this was 0 0.666 into e0 the numerator in place of etx this will be 
eta 0 divided by 2 so it is 188.50 so this gives us sty hty will be equal to 3.53 into 10 to the power minus 3 capital E suffix 0 therefore in general the transmitted magnetic field intensity in the vector form ht bar will be 3.53 into 10 to the power minus 3 capital E suffix 0 the magnitude here into e to the power minus gz into a y cap and the unit will be ampere per meter so here we are completed with the transmitted electric and magnetic wave for the waves here so parts a b and c have been solved for problem number three so i hope you have understood the reflection of electromagnetic wave by a perfect dielectric medium at the normal incidence by practicing this problem number one two and three in the next video we shall be starting with the new topic the new topic is called the reflection of uniform plane wave by a perfect conductor that too at the normal incidence so for understanding more things into the subject electromagnetic field theory or practicing more problems you can subscribe to ikeda channel thank you